This is Kim Jong-gi, the greatest artist to ever have lived. Known for his ability to draw anything from imagination. And for that brush pen. That goddamn brush pen. I first found him in 2018 through that Proko interview. You know the one. His crazy perspective, his ink exclusivity, his undying love for drawing, and those ballpoint pen sketches, he completely changed the way that I view art. So what is it that made him so great? Can us mere mortals achieve it too? I think so, but there's a catch. The thing about Kim Jong-gi is he's one of a kind for a reason. He started drawing at 6, but unlike other 6 year olds, he never grew out of it. Drawing was his thing from the moment he could grasp a pencil in his tiny little hands. If you want to play the numbers game for a minute, let's say you started drawing at age 19, like me. That's 13 years of extra experience he's had. If he drew for even one hour a day on average across those years, that's damn near 5,000 hours of experience he'd already gotten in by the time I'd figured out that housekeeping would be the death of me and that I couldn't do it for the rest of my life. To help put this into perspective a little more, I've tracked my hours into art from the very beginning of my journey, and I'm only just now at that 5,000 hours mark. Sure, this is 6 years compared to 13, but that 1 hour a day estimate I gave him, let's be honest, I was playing it safe. This is what he was drawing at 17 years old. Odds are, as a kid he was drawing a little less, but as a teenager he was rage drawing for hours every single day, bringing that average way up. A more realistic number might be around 14,000 hours, hell even that could be underselling it. But numbers aren't everything, and there's something else he was doing that was way more vital to his success. Even at age 6, he was doing something different to the people around him. He says he was already more visually advanced in kindergarten than those around him, drawing objects in 3D while his peers were still drawing in 2D. It's not that distinction though, of 2D to 3D that's important. It's what got him to that understanding in the first place, and the compounding effect that it had on his growth. See, most 6 year olds are drawing something like this. So taking that leap of adding a third dimension, it's a really simple but groundbreaking discovery for someone that young to make. So, how did he do it? Simple answer, it's observation skill. But you've heard that answer a thousand times before, so let me elaborate because there's more to it. So, observation skill is being able to look at the world around you and understand what you see. To look at your TV and understand what it looks like from the front and the back. To think about its relationship in perspective to the table it's sitting on, to the lounge you're watching from, and so on. When he was young, his understanding of this was really simple. The objects closer to me are bigger, the ones further away get smaller. But, by putting his focus on really observing and understanding the world around him, he was strengthening that muscle. The ability to accurately observe and understand, rather than just taking a quick glance and assuming the rest. Now obviously, this means his observation skill improved, and that's great! But here's the important bit. The muscles that are strongest are the ones we default to using. Our mind always wants to take the path of least resistance and highest reward. For most of us, this means taking a quick glance and assuming that we know the rest, it's easier and we're probably 60% accurate anyway. But for him, the path of least resistance was accurately observing, because that muscle had been trained from age 6 and was stronger than any other. It's no wonder people call him talented and think it's some magical gift. To stumble across that so young and be training those skills from day one is life changing. For your default habits and strongest muscles to be the ones most effective for learning? But what about the rest of us then? I didn't have six pack eyes at six years old, so how do we bridge that gap? To bridge that gap, you only need to do one thing. Take the smallest possible steps with the highest possible accuracy. If you're a musician learning a new song, you don't blitz your way through it on attempt number one, playing it as fast as possible. Doing that, you're moving too fast to actually learn the piece, right? But if you keep doing that over and over, you are learning something. You're training yourself to play sloppy. And I don't mean this metaphorically or like I'm calling you lazy, literally you are repeating the steps over and over to learn to play incorrectly. You're training your brain to play fast and inaccurately. When you slow down to an excruciatingly slow pace and focus on getting every single note exactly correct, what you're doing is training your brain to perfect the movement. 
the more you do this, the faster you get at it. And any of you with musical experience know that this is true. 10 hours of rushed practice is worth nothing compared to one hour of slow, focused, and determined practice. I used to think that learning worked like this. If I put 100 hours in at 100% focus, I might get 100 XP, but that's exhausting and hard. So if I instead put 200 hours in at 50% focus, that'll take me longer, but I'll get to the same spot in the end anyway, right? This is wrong. Not all time spent learning is equal. What's important isn't the sheer number of hours, but the level of focus and where you're targeting it. It's really difficult at first to slow down and focus on getting each step as accurate as you can. But you do this enough and the correct actions become second nature. This is how you bridge that gap, and this is how Kim Jong-gi got so good. In his case, it wasn't intentional, no six-year-old is thinking like this. But whether it's deliberate or just coincidence, taking the time to slowly cultivate this way of thinking will drastically change your progress for the rest of your life. There is, though, one final thing he was doing that makes all the difference. Getting to be that good isn't really about your approach to learning. Don't get me wrong, it's an important factor or I wouldn't have brought it up in the first place. But there's a lot of people that are good at learning. What separates him from everybody else? The thing that really makes Kim Jong-gi so special isn't his skill level. It isn't how smart he is, it isn't how good he was at learning. It was his undying love for drawing. He frequently would draw for 10 plus hours a day. He would livestream on YouTube for 5 hours without a single break. Part of his job was flying around the world filling these massive multi-meter long canvases with drawings all from his imagination. All of this for work, so not even mentioning the mountain of personal drawings he did outside of the public eye. That's not something you can do day in, day out for 41 years unless you really have an undying love for your craft. That's what makes him different. It's his unrivaled passion for art stacked on top of his observation skill and approach to learning. So now you have to ask yourself, what do you want? If you want to be as good as him, that's something that only comes from a pure love for drawing. And that can be cultivated with time. He didn't start out drawing for 10 hours a day at age 6. But you probably can't get there if it's out of ego, this desire to become great, better than the best, and prove yourself. Because that comes from a fundamentally different place. Can us mere mortals achieve it too? Absolutely. But only if it's what you truly want. Have fun drawing.